Hey everyone, it's Lena. Thank you for joining me for Sketchbook Sunday, episode 20. So I've been thinking about this Sketchbook Sunday series and how making these videos and focusing more on playing with paint in my sketchbook has been really helpful for me. Um, I've talked about this in numerous past Sketchbook Sunday episodes. So we're in 20 episodes now, which is the equivalent of five months. And I'm thinking, Whenever it is that I complete my current sketchbook, uh, whatever episode that may be, I will then make a sketchbook tour video where I'm flipping through the sketchbook just as you would if you were to open it yourself. And after that, we'll see <laughs> where this goes beyond that. If you guys want me to continue the series, um, we'll see where I am in my work piles at that time frame, and I'm sure we'll figure something out, but it'll be around for a while. So don't worry, I still have tons of pages in my sketchbook left. So. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but I just wanted to throw that idea out there. So today, while I paint these little jellyfish studies, I wanted to talk to you guys about why it's important to become conscious of your thought patterns and how they can affect you um, and your overall mindset, like how it dictates your life and future. So to use myself as an example, Growing up, I, much like the majority of children in our modern day education system, are typically not encouraged to pursue a serious career in the arts. And judging by the comments and messages I've received over the years, I see that I'm not the only one who was swayed into having this idea. This idea is constantly reinforced as we become older, so a lot of us, myself included, internalize this and believe it and we're very cautious for that reason we're not so adamant to go ahead and jump into the idea of becoming a full-time painter because that sounds crazy to everyone so the idea of an art career is thought to be too much of a risk to pursue because the chances of failure are so high right you can't become an artist what are you gonna do live in a box now I know there are exceptions, obviously. There are some people out there who do encourage their kids to pursue their dreams, but we're talking about the overall societal consensus that there seems to be, that once you become a certain age, it's time to really think about your future, really focus on getting a degree, getting a real job. I mean, it was cute when you were a kid and you wanted to be an artist, but now you gotta really get serious because you're not a kid anymore. And being an artist and having those kinds of dreams is only for kids, right? How cute. Yeah, BS, I call BS. So, you know, now we're growing up in the real world and the real world apparently won't allow you to be an artist. And that's certainly not a fun thought to live with, especially if you're really, really passionate about it. And this had me really sad for a while. I was almost convinced, actually, I think I was convinced that it was true and I started to go down a path that would have never made me happy. I was constantly in a negative thought pattern, just a loop of negative crap. They weren't ideas that I was born with, they were just, you know, given to me by society. They weren't mine to begin with. Having a belief in something, in an idea, it's... It's just an incredibly powerful force. And I'm just speaking purely about the human mind, but if you want to, you can go ahead and <laughs> throw religion in there. But, you know, basically what a belief will drive us to do. This can be used for good and bad, as observed by countless wars over resources and religion that we've had in the world. But how does this exactly apply to art? The idea that if I tried to do art full time, it would lead me to failure it wasn't my own belief, but it was constantly reinforced and eventually it became a part of me. It was subconscious at this point. I had internalized it and I was making my decisions in my life accordingly. Decisions that never would have brought me happiness. There was a point where I decided to change this, to get out of this belief because this fear was stopping me from being happy. It was just polluting my day-to-day -day life. I was constantly stuck in a loop of sadness. Now, I'm not trying to take the role of a psychiatrist or therapist here at all. So I just want to clarify that. This is all just from my experience. So day by day, slowly through writing and through focusing on my thoughts, um, through years and years of repetition, uh, I managed to get rid of the fear and stop holding on to that belief that I was just destined to fail in art. Um, 
So I basically left myself with no other option but to just dive headfirst into my passion, no matter how long it took. You know, there was a point where it was just a side gig and it was a hobby, but at some point I had to decide that I'm either going to really commit to this or just be lukewarm my whole life. And I decided to really commit to that. And if I hadn't acknowledged the negative thought patterns that were dictating the trajectory of my life back then, I would still be on a path that I'm not passionate about. So I guess I kind of... Uh, brainwashed myself. Does that make any sense? I sure hope so. And I appreciate you guys listening to me ramble about these ideas. I hope I can offer at least something positive out of it. Maybe I'm causing confusion. I don't know. I just think having a strong, resilient mindset is crucial to happiness and to having the motivation and desire to make your life into an adventure that you're actually excited about. And I'm sure you've heard these ideas before. Like, I'm not some super original, all-knowing unicorn. Um, I think everything's inspired by something, just like this video. And there were a lot of inspirational people that influenced where I took my own personal development through the last five years, um, which is always a work in progress. But uh, Julia Cameron, Robert Henry, um, Napoleon Hill, many others actually. I'm just really tired and it's not coming to my brain. But, and obviously, of course, my personal experience. I am referencing that a lot as well. I can't really give much if I'm just parroting information that's been written and spoken about elsewhere countless times. If I don't really understand it for myself and I haven't gone through doing all these <laughs> weird experiments on myself in my head. I'm starting to sound like a crazy person. Excellent. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you always find inspiration. Try and stay positive. I wish you all a beautiful week. See you next time.